are increasingly becoming more popular for their backyard home center. They have some notable advantages over chickens. They're smaller, so their inputs and outputs scale proportionally. I'll leave what that entails up to your imaginations. They also are much quieter than chickens, which can be vital in neighborhoods where keeping poultry is forbidden. Similar to chickens, quails lay eggs daily. And once I observed our male having relations with a female, I began setting the eggs aside for the first batch. Once a dozen has accumulated, I set them in the incubator. Quails only take two and a half weeks to hatch compared to the three weeks it takes chickens. And just in my personal experience, they have less trouble hatching than the chickens. The next two and a half weeks were pretty uneventful. I found other gardening tasks to keep me occupied and checked in on the eggs maybe every four-ish days to make sure the incubator was topped up on water. A week passed, another dozen eggs accumulated, so I marked an X on them using a pencil and set them in the incubator. Two and a half weeks later to the day, I just happened to look into the office as I'm walking past and see a dark figure inside the incubator that wasn't there before. Upon closer inspection, I realized that the first quail has hatched. I checked the other eggs for signs of hatching and it looked like only one other one would be joining it. This first batch only ended up having two successful hatches. I set up a cage for them, complete with straw, food and water dishes, and a heat lamp. I placed them in what at the time I thought was a brilliant idea, in my bedroom. The first night would show this to be a terrible mistake. You know how in movies, when a couple has their first child, they always show a montage of the parents never getting any sleep at night? That's basically what the first night with these chicks was like. I went to bed at like 9.30 and at 10, I'm woken up to the sound of chirping. I go over to them and see what the issue is, and I can't really see any. They stop chirping, so I go back to sleep. 11 o'clock comes. And once again, I go over there frustrated at them and see no issue. I thought that they might not be comfortable with the straw. I wasn't about to go rummaging around my house for a clean rag for them to sleep on at this hour. So I just got them a clean pair of socks with the intent of replacing them for the promised rag in the morning. And I went back to bed. 12.30 comes. I go over to them, quite irritated at them, and try to figure out what they want from me. I notice that they stop chirping whenever I approach the cage, and I remember the birds like to imprint on whoever, or whatever, they see first, which was me in their case. I wasn't sure if quails imprint too, and didn't want to look it up either, so I grabbed a photo of a close-up of my face, which I conveniently happened to have near me. I propped it up against the cage so it looked like I was still there watching them, and I went back to bed. 2 a.m. comes. At this point of the night, I was very angry with them. I vowed to move them so far away from my room for the next night that no one would hear their midnight broadcasts. I pet them with my finger for a while, trying to figure out what they want, but nothing. They fall asleep in a few minutes, and they look so precious. In my head, I apologize to them for getting angry, and remember that I've had worse nights in my life, and relatively speaking, this one wasn't that bad. I quietly leave them and go to bed. 4.15 a.m. comes. I go over yet again and I'm amazed that such small packages of fluff could possibly be so loud and obnoxious. I couldn't quite wrap my head around it at the time, but they were some real night owls, these two. I'm not sure how I thought of this, but I thought, hey, maybe they're thirsty. Despite them very clearly having both food and water in their cage. I dip my finger in the water, rub it against their beaks, and they drink it up. They follow my finger to the water dish and begun to drink. Now this was almost too much. Seriously? This is what you wanted? You've had water in here the whole time, I thought to myself. I went to bed and slept until my alarm at 6 a.m. They haven't chirped like that for the entirety of the next day, so I guess this was most likely the culprit. The next morning, 
I made true on my promise to them and moved them into the office downstairs, away from everyone's bedrooms. A week later, the next batch hatched, bringing the total to ten chicks. I put them with the ones from the first batch and left them on their own. I knew quails grew very quickly, but it's still remarkable to see just how quickly they can grow when the chicks from the two batches stood next to each other. I have two more batches planned for this season, and then I'll call it good until next year. It'll be interesting to see just how the chicks from each of the four batches will compare to each other in size and maturity, despite being only a week apart from the closest batch. What most likely is going to happen next is that once the last batch of eggs hatches, we'll harvest meat from the current residents of the quail corner and allow the new tenants to move in. It's been established that quails grow remarkably quickly and pretty soon will outgrow their current cage, especially with such an overpopulation. After all, we're only halfway to our expected quail chick population. Once the chicks reach adulthood, I plan on keeping three to four of the new females to replace the ones we have now, and then sell most of the rest or move them into the freezer. The males' days are limited, and if no one wants to buy them off me, they'll get sent off on vacations before the cold of winter sets in. If you enjoyed what you saw, why not subscribe and hit the notification icon to stay up to date on when I post. And if you change your mind, you can always unsubscribe later. But until next time, 